My name is Marie from Medical Channel Asia and today we'll be talking about cord blood banking. In the early 2000s, parents and parents-to-be in Singapore have the option to bank their baby's cord blood. If you've never heard about this before, or if you have and you want to find out more information, here you have today is Dr. Teo Cheng Ping. Hello! Hi, thank you Mary. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Teo. I'm a senior consultant hematologist in Parkway Cancer Centre. My subspecialty training is in stem cell transplants. In 2002, a few colleagues and I started Stem Cord Private Limited. We are a cord blood bank that specializes in collecting stem cells from cord blood, freezing and storing them for future uses. So the first question is, what is cord blood banking? Yes, cord blood banking does sound very sophisticated and very technical. But actually, if you were to look from a layman's perspective, it is simply just extracting the stem cells from cord blood, freezing it and storing it for future use. So what's so special about cord blood? Uh, stem cells, don't our bone marrow also produce stem cells? Yes, you are absolutely right. Bone marrow does contain the same type of stem cells as cord blood, but there's a big difference. Right? A few advantages of using cord blood. Number one, the collection is a lot easier, less painful, and no risk to either mother or child. Whereas from bone marrow, while again there is no risk, but there is the disadvantage of being a painful procedure. Okay? Second advantage of using cord blood stem cells is that these stem cells are a little bit more naive. They will create less problems in what we call graft versus host disease as and when we want to do the transplant. So what's the purpose of keeping all these stem cells then? You mentioned something about treatment. Well, I think you have hit the most important part about storage. See, to store the stem cells from cord blood, there must be uses. Okay? The current use is for stem cell transplants. We can treat over 80 types of diseases with uh, cord blood stem cells. So that itself will offer a chance of a cure to many of these patients who have these conditions. Now, besides current uses, our interest is in future uses. We can use the cord blood from stem cells for regenerative therapy and in future, we can use cells from the cord blood which we have stored today for future cell and gene therapy which can be used against a variety of cancers and even chronic infections like HIV or Hepatitis B. What if my child suddenly just develops a blood disorder and we're thinking about using these stem cells to treat the child but the stem cells come from her, right? How is it still possible to treat? Yes, this is a rather complicated question which comes with a yes and no answer. Yes, there are some blood disorders that we can still use the cord blood to do the stem cell transplant. A very good example is aplastic anemia, where cord blood stem cells is a very good choice to offer a chance of a cure. But there are other blood disorders like thalassemia majors, sickle cell anemias, where because the, the disorder is already in the stem cells, we can't use that unit of cord blood. But if they had stored the cord blood units of the brothers and sisters, then yes, you can use the cord blood units from the brothers and sisters. So sometimes we can use for ourselves, which we call autologous, or we have to use from a brother or sister, which is allogenic. Wow, since stem cells are so versatile, you mentioned that you can treat your brothers and your sisters, right? How about using your stem cells to treat people outside of your family? Yes, that is entirely possible. Coplet banking started from what we call public coplet banking, where units of cord blood from pregnant ladies who do not want to keep for themselves will donate to the bank, and anyone in the public can use them. So that is possible. But what is more interesting is what I will consider as family banking. Uh, in the last 10 to 15 years, there are more and more examples of how that unit of cord blood can be useful for siblings, can be useful for parents or even grandparents, what I call three-generation usage. It can be used for stem cell transplant, but more interesting development is actually regenerative therapy using cord blood from the grandchild 
for the grandparents. There are studies which are going on now looking at using cord blood for strokes in grandparents. So cord blood banking actually sounds really interesting and cord blood treatment seems like it will be able to help to cure a lot of different things. But it also sounds really new. Are you sure? Is it proven to work? Oh yes, of course. If you're talking about stem cell transplant, it's proven beyond doubt. It does help to cure over 80 types of diseases, whether it's blood cancers or blood disorders. And nowadays, we can use cord blood as a, regen as a form of regenerative therapy to treat cerebral palsy, autism, and even strokes. Yeah, actually, I've also heard this news just came out in February about cord blood transplant curing HIV. What is now, your comment? Of course, we have to be balanced in terms of expectations of, from cord blood. This was an article that came out in the New York Times back in February, and the headlines was a little bit dramatic. It says that cord blood transplant, a novel treatment for HIV. Um, mentioning that uh, the cord blood transplant had cured this lady with HIV. Yes, it is true, but some indications like this, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. That's one, number one. Number two, this one is, is a lucky coincidence. The transplant used a unit of cord blood which has got this specific gene mutation, CCR5 Delta 32. This gene mutation confers natural resistance against HIV. That lady had the transplant not for the HIV. That lady had the transplant for the AML and because of this lucky coincidence that that unit of cord blood has got this gene mutation, that lady was also cured of a HIV. Now, unfortunately, this gene mutation is not common. It happens in about 1% of the whole wide world population. So if you have a HIV, I think the best is still to go back to usual treatment and not consider this as a form of treatment. So this is query, is it painful to obtain cord blood? No, it's absolutely not. And it's absolutely safe. We will only collect the cord blood when the child is safely delivered and the mother is in a safe condition. And thereafter, what we do is we will clean the entire cord, sterilize it, and insert the needle, which the cord blood will then flow into the bag for collection. It's very safe, no pain at all. So, does it mean that everyone can have their cord blood donated? Is there any risks involved in this procedure? There are no risks involved in this procedure. And in theory, everyone can collect their own cord blood unit. The more important issue is, would it be useful to the child himself or herself or for the family? This is for autologous storage, but for the public, the criteria are a little bit more stringent because they need to be sure that that unit of cord blood is absolutely safe to be donated to someone else. So after the cord blood is collected, it flows into this bank, right? Where does the cord blood go after that? Okay. Of course, it will reach our lab where we will process. Now, processing is not rocket science. There are many banks who can do it. But what's the difference between one bank and another bank? And that's in the standards and in the special features that a particular bank will undertake. Like for example, ourselves in Stamcon, we decided to go for the highest, most stringent accreditation, which is the FACT. We are the first in Southeast Asia to do it and not many banks are willing to use this voluntary accreditation because it's very difficult to get. Second is, not many banks would do like what we do, which is store in two banks, two locations. Now, you may want to ask me, why so kiasu? Because these stem cells are very precious. They are very useful. The more kiasu we are, the better. Two banks, two locations increases the security. In case something happens to one location, you still have a backup. Second, some of the collections are so good that you can have two potential usage rather than one usage. Because you store all in one bag, you may have a billion cells inside, but still one usage. 
So after the cord blood is uh, stored, right? How long can you keep it for? Is it like you just keep it there forever? Okay. If the storage has been done properly, it can be stored forever. There are studies that have been done that has gone 15 years and 18 years, which these researchers, every year they will extract some to test. Are these cells still alive? After 15 years, still alive. After 18 years, still alive. So they decided to stop the research because they either ran out of money or they lost interest. But the belief among experts is that if you store the stem cells properly, if the storage conditions are according to international standards, it can store forever. So core blood banking actually sounds like a really good deal. At what point should parents or parents-to-be consider or sign up for core blood banking? This is a simple question. I think the lady can make a decision or the couple can make a decision anytime, even up to the very last minute, even though we do not like it. Because if you were to make a decision on the day that you get into labor, sometimes the blood may not be collected properly, mistakes may happen and you will miss the opportunity of collecting the cord blood. My suggestion, our suggestion is that the minute the lady knows she is pregnant, go and find out more about cord blood banking. Go and ask, go and Google, and then make a decision by mid-trimester. That way, there's lots of uh, preparation, lots of time to prepare for a proper collection. And so for our last question, for all of this, how much does it cost to bank cord blood? Well, we do have a few packages that will cater to the different needs of different parents or the grandparents who may be paying. But the annual storage fee is about $275 per year. If the child is a Singaporean, you can use the baby bonus to offset some of the costs. There you have it. Thank you, Dr. Teo, for being here today to enlighten us all about court blood banking. If you want to find out more information, please check out the description box below. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for your regular dose of Asian health information.